OpenAI just released image editing inside of Dolly 3, among other things. Let's dive into it. Right off the bat, guys, you can see we've got a little one minute demo here from OpenAI in Twitter. You can now edit Dolly images inside of ChatGPT across web, iOS, and Android. So that means this feature is rolled out to everyone, assumedly, on any of the OpenAI platforms. And I'm also inferring from this that apps such as Microsoft Bing Image Creator, for example, that uses Dolly. 3's API does not have access to image editing. Now, if you guys remember way back, Dolly 2 did indeed come out of the gate with image editing, so it's interesting it took so long for Dolly 3 to get it, but I have a feeling that this works in a little bit of a different way. Let's take a peek at this video demo and then dive into the feature itself. So, by the way, guys, this video has no sound, so I'm going to put some AI-generated music in the background by Suno AI. Edit Dolly images, okay. Go see Dolly creates two images of poodles with happy birthday there. And we can click on the images themselves and click this new edit button and highlight a certain area just like in painting. And it seems like we'll have a chat on the side and we can actually just tell it to edit whatever we please. So add bows, for example, we can do natural language text editing. Very interesting indeed. It's creating the image. And there we go, adds a couple of bows on there and it looks pretty good from this example. We'll have to see how well it works in our testing today. I will point out though guys, this concept of natural language based image editing is not new to the AI generated space at all. Definitely something that has been experimented with and uh, minimal success results I would say so far. This should be pretty comprehensive I think in comparison to some of the more rudimentary technologies we've seen in the past. There's also an open source alternative that that I will talk about at the end of this video, although I'm not sure how good it necessarily is in comparison to this. It doesn't work exactly the same. Oh guys, by the way, and based on this GIF, it looks like there's a few extra little tweaks and features in the Dolly 3 chat GPT, custom GPT that OpenAI made. Let's go ahead and pull up, ooh, Adobe Express is in here now? Anyways, let's go ahead and pull up the Dolly 3 chat GPT. Okay, you can immediately see a difference, guys. It's gonna give us some examples of what different art styles might look like and how the AI works under the hood. So that's great for new users. Dedicated aspect ratio setting as well in here. I'm gonna go ahead and generate a frog riding a bicycle as my first image here. Dolly's gonna go ahead and create that. Okay, we got some happy frogs. And if I click into this image, ah, there it is, the new edit function, okay. So very simple controls, we can get real small. Can we erase things too? Like, let's say I don't like this butterfly. Can I just say, Remove butterfly. Does that work? And I'll move my head, by the way, guys, so you can see this just a little bit better. Oh, there it goes. Removed the butterfly. I've created a new image based on your request. Oh, perfect. Okay, let's let's take this a step further here. I'm gonna highlight this entire uh, bicycle helmet and a little bit above it as well. Give him a top hat like. Abraham Lincoln. Okay, and it gets it done with great success. That actually looks very good. Oh, this is this is pretty awesome. Oh, and by the way, guys, a new chat GPT feature, at least on web. This was in iOS and Android for quite some time. You can actually read aloud everything. Here's the frog on its bicycle adventure, now adorned with a top hat reminiscent of Abraham Lincoln. I hope you find this edition as charming as intended. <laughs> Alright, let's get let's get crazy. I'm gonna highlight all behind him here. Oh no, there is a big hungry monster behind him. I'm interested to see if this will work. Okay, and this one maybe not as intended, but still pretty good, I think. The scene has taken a dramatic turn with the addition of a large cartoonish monster behind the frog. It's a whimsical yet suspenseful twist. <laughs> okay. 
<laughs> Thanks, Dolly. All right, I like this. I want to try a new image, though. I want to make something more realistic. Overall, that's pretty cool, though. Like, it saves all your images individually so you can see how you branched off and got to the, the part that you're at. Let's change gears. I want to make something that is a bit more realistic. We'll do a Shih Tzu Dog uh, Studio Portrait. All right, so now we have a, a blank slate, shall we say. One thing I wish I could do is zoom in a little bit, but uh, yeah, I mean, OpenAI isn't necessarily known for doing very diverse features in their apps such as this. Let's turn him into a wizard. Can it do multiple edits at once? That's what we're going to find out now. I'll just, you know, highlight the whole box bottom portion here. Turn him into a wizard with a cloak, a hat, and glowing green eyes. Okay, it tried its best, it tried its best. This is reminiscent to me of Adobe's uh, in painting that they have in Photoshop. It's pretty good, but not perfect all the time. You might have to reduce some stuff. I think this is a good base, though. The Shih Tzu has been transformed into a mystical wizard, complete with a cloak, a hat, and enchanting glowing green eyes. It's a magical scene indeed. <laughs> okay, let's finish off the cloak. So we'll highlight this and say, can you fix the cloak? Fix the cloak, make a better hat. That did not look great. Okay, that's definitely a lot better. I'm, I'm happy with that. So now let's highlight the rest and we'll say like, put him on the moon. I will say though, like the edits that it's making aren't necessarily very believable or consistent with the rest of the art style. It's a little bit mishmashed, but that's not something I'm going to necessarily hold against it because I haven't seen uh, another one be able to do very consistent art styles in their in painting or editing. It seems to be something that hasn't been solved in the AI space just yet. Okay, well that's pretty good, that's pretty good. He's definitely hanging out there on the moon. Now the thing here though is that we were able to edit an image to this point, but does it make more sense for us to just generate it straight up? Photo of a Shih Tzu who's a wizard on the moon. Oh wow, we're getting two different responses at once. We get to choose which one we prefer. If you guys aren't aware, sometimes uh, ChatGPT will do this and we can see which response, you know, we like better. Probably this one. And I think it's arguable, like this is a much better Shih Tzu wizard with green eyes on the moon in comparison to this one. So I think it's safe to say that really the purpose isn't to edit your image continuously to get it to the exact point that it needs to be. It really seems to be more try to get it to generate exactly what you're looking for right in the beginning and then fix any of the details that it gets wrong. All right, so now that we know that, let's take this a step further. All right, we're doing a very complicated prompt. This is going to be widescreen. On the right-hand side of the image is a classic 3D lemon character relaxing on the beach, sipping green lime drink. He is on a tropical island, and on the left-hand side is a peach who is floating on a blow-up tube in the ocean, soaking up the sunshine, and text in the top middle reads, Matt Vidbro. So we're going to see if it screws any of these things up, and anything it screws up, we're going to try to fix with the editing. Now, I will admit, guys, what I would really love to see is the ability to upload our own images and then edit them, but I don't think that we have that capability. Although it's it's worth checking. Okay, so we got our images and sure enough, yeah, we got some pretty screwed up stuff. It got the peach and the lemon on the wrong sides. Although I don't know if I'm going to hold it against it necessarily. Let's just try to fix the text right this second. Like this. The text is incorrect. I want bold text that reads Matt Vid Pro. Ah, uh, there it goes. It just removed the text altogether, which is disappointing. And it seems to have increased maybe the contrast a little bit. Is that correct? Uh, maybe just some contrast up here. Overall, though, come on, guys. We need some text. There was no text at all. I want bold white text that reads Matt Vid Pro. And there we go, yet again, nothing. We can't have any text on this, huh? That's kind of, uh, that's kind of troubling, to be honest. I'd like to see some fixed text. All right, what if we go back to where it almost got it correct? And we say, just kind of erase that. Fix the text. And I don't know if that's better or worse, to be honest. Still not correct. So it looks like you can't fix text, which is typically a pretty big problem for these image generators. Looks like for text generation, I'll be sticking to Ideogram AI. All right, let's go back to the dog here. Can we add extra text in? Like, I'll erase this whole top hand side here. Massive 
text at the top reads, hello world. Very simple. Okay, all right, so it can generate text after all. That's uh, a little bit better, but still not perfect. I would recommend using Ideogram AI if you want to generate text. And speaking of, can we plop other images in this? Like, can I put this image in here? And if you click on it, there does not appear to be any editing interface at all. We can ask it to edit it though. Do the reverse. He is basically on the surface of the sun. Okay, so yeah, definitely not exactly this image. Oh well, we gave it our best shot. Here's another example. We have a screwed up hand here. Just highlight this and say, fix the hands. Oh, there we go. Okay, fix the hands up pretty good actually that time. I do like this image. I'm going to save it. Okay, so not bad. So for this Dolly 3 in painting that is available inside of Chat GPT, I'm really happy to see that it's also available on the iOS and Android apps. I think that's honestly one of the most valuable parts of this. But, uh, you know, the quality of the in painting is decent. It will get some good edits done. Seems to not really work great for text, though. If you're looking to do text, I really would just recommend Ideogram AI. However, for fixing hands, adding in little details, definitely gets the job done, but I wouldn't use it to make your entire image. I would try to get as close as you can in the original prompt and then edit based off of that. Seems to be the best, uh move there for sure. So other than that guys, OpenAI has now made it so that you can actually use ChatGPT without having an account at all, which is very interesting. I guess it must rely on the cookies or something to have your chat history. Oh, I see. Save your chat history. You actually have to log in. All right, never mind. Looks like you don't get any history, but you can actually talk to the model, say, what's up? What is my name? Okay, <laughs> fair enough. I do like this though. A little bit more accessibility. You don't have to log in. You don't have to make an account. You can just pull it up and show anyone very quickly and anyone can use it with ease. Good on OpenAI for trying to democratize their technology just a little bit more. I know that they've been getting a lot of flack for uh, not being as open as they could be lately, but I would I would say this is a step in the right direction maybe. Not as far as I'd like to see them take things, but still pretty cool. So finally, i just like to touch on the fact that there is open source versions of editing that works in very similar ways. It's a segment anything and edit on your own local computer. So it's a Gradio app. I'll link it down below if you guys want to install it, but it's on Pinocchio, which is a super easy, no code installer for this. It works pretty well where you can segment an original generation like this, change the prompts to, in this case, Lego pieces, and then you get uh, the person cutting up Lego pieces instead, not bad. Or you can change it to chocolate, there you go. Or you can change it to garlic, and, or pickles, whatever, the list goes on and on. It's nice because this is a very easy, easy, quick install, and it is entirely free as long as your machine can handle the AI image generation aspect. So yeah, check out BrushNet if you're looking for an open source alternative. Oh, and this Twitter post has some pretty fun examples where you can see different versions of all of these memes, including a Lego version of uh, GigaChad, which is pretty entertaining. Ooh, only 20 gigabytes to install, which isn't too bad for an AI app. Now, on the note of OpenAI and this new Dolly editing feature that, again, we've seen it before in other AIs that can be used online or, you know, Midjourney, for example, has a very similar feature. It seems to me like they have always been capable of adding this feature in and they just sort of lazily took their time because they're not really that concerned with image generation. Sora, for example, is a much bigger priority. GPT-5, for example, is a much bigger priority. So I'm just sort of thinking and let me know your thoughts on this. What is the best way to think about OpenAI in this regard? Are they falling behind in terms of image generation? Or are they just keeping up by adding features in as they see fit? Or do you think that they're playing a whole nother ball game here? Let me know, guys, but check out my Twitter, check out my Discord server. If you like the video, please leave a like. And if you aren't subscribed, feel free to subscribe. See you in the next one. Goodbye.